you can't force someone to change themselves, God does, but you can be a good example for him to them. Yesterday I asked in my Instagram stories what you learned in church, and I wanna to read to you all of your answers. And there's one in particular that I drew that resonated with me from our friend Dreamer of Books. So I'm gonna be focusing on that in tonight's talk. First, our friend Karen, we learned about finding joy. Elder Christensen's, I think she meant Christofferson's, last general conference talk. In a second comment, she also said, we learned about forgiveness. And I noticed there was a reoccurring theme um, from our friend Jackie.A-U-M-A-N said that it was our primary program. So I learned why the Savior asked us to be like little children and red heart. I loved that so much. And our friend M-I-N-D-I, Johnson Smith, also had their primary program along with a half a dozen other of our friends, according to the comments you had left in my Instagram stories that I asked 24 hours ago. Um, now, our friend Dreamer of Books said, we can't force someone to change themselves, God does, but we can be a good example for him to them. I love this so much that I did some research and I found some Bible verses that I wanted to share and just do a little talk on this. Let me know your thoughts and your comments. So thank you to our friend Dreamer of Books for inspiring tonight's talk. And I'll probably get to all of your other comments that you had asked because there were some really good ones. I would also love to do one on primary because I think um, I have some interesting statistics from an Area 70 about the number of prime, the percentage of primary students that if we know them by name, that they are more likely to engage in young women's or young men's. So I thought that was, was really fascinating. So, and this is worldwide throughout the church. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and they're more likely to serve a mission. So our friend Dreamer of Books inspired this. The, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints we members have a high emphasis on personal agency and the role of Christ as the ultimate exemplar, drawing from scriptures from the Bible. One, inherent author, um, autonomy and personal agency. One of the fundamentalist beliefs of our church is that principles of agency, as the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, quote, for ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an association to the flesh, but by love serve one another, close quote. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, every individual has the freedom to choose their path and with that freedom, comes responsibility, close quote. That is so powerful. And I think this is so prevalent to what we've been learning with the Come Follow Me curriculum over the last couple of months in particular is, is that we have agency and everything that we believe as members of the church can be traced back to the Bible. And that's why I felt because, you know, I, I upload these to my YouTube channel and this is, we're studying the New Testament this year. I wanted to kind of keep it on the Bible. Uh, okay. Number two, the role of the Savior. While we can't compel anyone to change, Jesus Christ can't touch their hearts. As talked about in Ecclesiastics 36, Chapter 36, verse 26, quote, a new heart also will give you and a new spirit will also put within you, close quote. It's a statement to the transformative power of Christ's atonement. And that really resonated with me. So I have five 
bullet points. And this will be number three, being a light to the world. And I love this because we're getting ready to go into the season of hashtag light the world. And I'm really passionate about lighting the world and sharing charity and the pure love of Christ and, and being a pillared or an example, leading by example for um, people that are not fellow members to show, okay, uh, love and accept, uh, no, being a light to the world. Jesus taught in Sermon on the Mount, ye, quote, are, ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. Now, we studied this, I think, back in March or April. I forget. It's been a long time. I am actually really proud of myself. I just um, finished... Uh, a come follow me lesson for the end of November. <laughs> I recorded it for my YouTube channel. Now keep in mind, I still have to edit it. So it's about, you know, 15 hours of editing um, for that lesson. But I was so proud of myself for doing that today. So I'm a little confused as to what come follow me lesson we're on this week because I've, I'm so ahead, uh, which I'm excited about. So, and so Matt, yeah. Okay, our responsibility is to be that light, showing others the way through our righteousness actions. Number four out of five, love and acceptance. In John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus gives a new commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you, close quote. The unconditional Love means accepting and loving people as they are, allowing them the agency to find their path. So I think that's going to a lot of comments that I've been getting recently after I recorded the podcast, Men um, Who Love God, and talking about being an LGBTQ convert and a faithful Latter-day Saint a faithful Christ, Christian following the commandments as our single brothers and sisters. And I had a lot of comments from our friends, from you guys saying, you know, my son left or my two sons left and it breaks my heart. This goes back to that statement. So when I was researching this tonight and studying scripture for this talk, that the unconditional love means accepting and loving people as they are allowing them the agency to find their own path. I always say my journey isn't for everybody, but I love and respect you whether you choose to leave in the, stay at the church or leave the church. You'll still be a, an eternal brother or sister in my eyes. So I love that in John chapter 13, verse 34. Okay, number five, last but not least, emulating Christ's love. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians. And I just did Ephesians. When did I record Ephesians? I edited it. It's scheduled for general conference. Next Sunday is Ephesians. I did an awesome 22 minute less, uh, deep dive into Ephesians. So I hope you guys all check that out. A lot of editing went into it. Um, it was like an hour worth of recording just to bring it down to 22 minutes. Uh, okay, so Ephesians, um, okay, quote, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us. Ephesians chapter 5, 1 through 2. By embodying Christ's teachings and virtues, we can become a beacon of his love and his teachings to those around us. As we, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, <laughs> sorry, I had to do that. Um, I said to a friend, I said to a bishop in the ward I was visiting yesterday, I said, um, and there was also the Stake Relief Society president was there, and I said, um, made a comment like, 
oh, this was, I was able to say this back when we were allowed to use the M word, you know, um, and she said, um, and now it's <laughs> after you say it, I, I, I laughed, but I have a strong testimony that we need to use the full name of the church. So, um, so as members of the church, we recognize the sanctity of personal agency. While we can, um, can't compel change in others by living as Christ taught us, and shining our light brightly, we can inspire and influence those around us to come unto him. And I'm gonna close with my testimony as somebody who was an anti-member, somebody who was very much against this church that I'm now a part of. If my heart can soften, that's exactly what happened was members didn't try to compel to change me, but by living and, and treating me like Christ would and shining their light brightly, we can inspire and influence those around us to come unto him. And that was me. I came to the gospel. You can't deny that, you can't. So it shows that miracles happen. I'm a living example of a miracle. And I say that as my testimony in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, now that I'm all worked up there, I'm gonna get to your comments and see if um, our friend Dreamer of Books, this whole talk was inspired by your comment. Did you know that? Inspired by what you'd shared in my stories. So um, yeah, I talked about Karen's, I talked about several reoccurring themes with primary, but this talk was for you, sister. Um, I really, yeah, thank you for that. Hi, Michael, it's good to see you. See, it's so nice when I get to recognize your names, even though Michael's screen name doesn't say Michael, but I know he's Michael. Because <laughs> I just, you know, I know you guys. And this goes back to what I'm gonna put together for primary. I just wanna get my facts straight about the numbers. Um, and because I serve in the stake, I can have access to this. I, but there's a, there's a graph that I've seen that shows that the percentage of primary children who other that uh, teachers know them by name and ward members know them by the church members know them by name um, there is like an 80 percent higher chance that they would serve a mission and that they would not struggle with their testimony in seminary or in young men's or young women's. I just want to get all those numbers right before I start sharing that on, um, yeah, <laughs> on here. Um, hello, missionaries in Utah. We love missionaries everywhere. Um, you guys are the bomb without me. I did a zone conference for mission president Hendrickson. Not, was it Hendrickson? Yes, in Provo. Uh, we had a great time. Dreamer of books said, nope, but really good to hear. Um, Mitch says, hi, how, are you, how do you choose your topics? This one was specifically taken from the questions I asked you in my Instagram stories 24 hours ago. And what I did was I took screenshots of it and I just felt like, um, this was something that had to be shared. So what I did was I take uh, screenshots of all the comments that you guys give me. And, oops, there's Miss Sophie. <laughs> Just having fun. And then this was a comment from our friend Dreamer of Books. But I talked about my friend Karen's comment and several reoccurring themes with primary. And Dreamer of Books really resonated with me. She said right here, 
okay? Um, you can't force someone to change themselves, God does, but you can be the good example of him to them. And that just made me say, this is what I have to talk about tonight. And that's, um, yeah, so my stories, I really haven't used much, and I'm sorry, I've just been, you know, with this whole less Wi-Fi, more Nephi thing, if you may, I've been um, spending, um, every day I keep cutting my hair more and more. I'm gonna be bald by the time I get somewhere I need to be. <laughs> I'm shorter again, and I, when I got out of the shower, I says, oh my, I didn't realize I went that short. <laughs> I mean, the sides I buzz, but um, what I do is I just was trying to make it so that it was a little longer here and shorter back here, and I take thinning shears and thin it. Well, apparently I really thinned it because I am really short, very short. <laughs> So at least I still have a good crop at 50. <laughs> uh, so uh, Mitch, I hope I was able to answer your comments, your comment. Sandy, awesome. And Dreamer Book says, sometimes some things I have been monitoring to quote my friends, close quote, the missionaries, how I was struggling with the feeling of me not making a difference in the world. I am so sure that you are making a huge difference in the world because you inspired me to share this topic. And I say, if it only, if, if it affects just one person, then I feel like I did my job or my calling, if you may. I'm so passionate about missionary service, but not just bringing people to the gospel, but also keeping people in the gospel. Because there's, I've been asked to do it. And I can't ignore those who have that stewardship. And so that's what I'm doing. Um, so dreamers of books, I pray that this inspired you and I'm going to work extra hard to get this downloaded and uploaded to my playlist on my YouTube channel so you can watch the full thing. Everybody have an awesome morning or night. It is dark here. It's really dark. You can see. Um, and I don't like the fact that it's getting dark earlier. <laughs> it's like, I like longer days. Um, and then when I woke up this morning, it was dark. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> I wake up, it's dark. I go to bed, it's dark. Um, I use, I like getting up when it's light out, you know, meaning earlier, if that makes sense. Um, not when I got up at, at 6, uh, 15 this morning and it was pitch black. So anyway, um, have an amazing day or night depending on what part of the world you're in. And know that God loves you because I definitely feel it. Oh, we have more comments. Hello. I love I love the comments. Um, HW Cutie says, thank you for following your promptings. Mountain Mom 33, you changed your profile picture again. That's what gets me. But I know the name um, MT Mom uh, 33. Um, Elder Cook, April 2023, General Conference, quote, safety gathered home, close quote, said, quote, the Lord accepts those who have received his gospel to urgently strive to be a beacon of light. Oh, I love this. I meant to go back and rewatch this before General Conference this week. Um, an example that will be helping help others come to God, close quote. That is good. Thank you for sharing that. That is really powerful. Well, again, I want to thank our friend Dreamer of Books for inspiring this tonight. And I love you. And most importantly, so doesn't God. Bye for now.